everybody. It's Ken from Reverend Guitars here with Bob Balch, Fu Manchu, Big Scenic Millware, Sun and Sail Club, Southern California, Surfer, San Diego. That's it. See Rock ya. and roll. <laughs> That's all there is. We're gonna run through some some of the some of the sounds on the signature model. Uh, so the signature model was born out of the uh, Reverend Daredevil and Sensei models. And uh, many years ago, many, many years ago, oh, generations have passed. It, yeah, it seems. Nah, it was probably like 10 years ago. We were at uh, Orion Festival and uh, hanging out backstage, I believe, listening to Death. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. they were playing. That was yeah, cool. Yeah, it was cool. Yeah. And uh, you had an assortment of Daredevils and Senseis at the time. And uh, you, we were talking with Joe Naylor about things that you liked about both models. I like this, I like this, I like this. And then Joe had this idea that we could sort of combine those two into something really, really cool and you could call it your own. And then uh, we had, we got some digital files of your little signature there. Mm -hmm. And sure enough, the Bob Balch signature model was born. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't think you guys were gonna do it, but you did it. Yeah, so that's we, good. Were, we don't kid. Uh, we were partying down and they were like, we'll do it. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> sure. But it worked out. Yeah, it's 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 fucking beautiful. Huh? So it it's a solid Karina body and a three-piece Karina neck, and that is done lengthwise. Actually, if you flip it over there, Bob, you can kind of see how the neck is laminated together so that it's strong at the headstock without having one of those horrible feeling and ugly volute thingamabobs. Mm -hmm. And uh, and then of course uh, rosewood board and um, the Bob Balch signature rail hammer pickups which were created at the same time because we did, Joe had this whole big tone conversation with you. Yeah. And not only did we talk about the, the two guitars, but what you were looking for and what you liked about the rail hammers that we had put in your sensei at the time uh, and what you didn't like about them. And at the time, I think there was like an upper mid thing that might have been a little bright or a little harsh for you. And Joe figured, Joe didn't figure out, he knew that just by putting brass covers on these things was gonna tame this area uh, that, that that you were looking to be tamed, and we came up with these beautiful sounding pickups, and so we launched the pickups and the guitar at the same time. Let's run through some sounds. Yeah, we? sure. So yeah, these these pickups uh, have a little bit more of a mid-range spike, if I'm not mistaken. A right, so. little bit. Yeah. So uh, that's my clean tone. And then when I use um, my creepy finger spuzz, then it kind of pokes through a little bit more, and you get some more note clarity that. Uh, would otherwise be lost. So you can hear how like Still super fuzzy, but you get everything has a little bit of fur on it, which is super cool. So you you run your amps hot. So what it, what does the amp sound like with the guitar wide open and no pedals? In? Yeah, I just that's go sort for, of your baseline. Yeah, I go for like a you know early ACDC kind of thing. Yeah, and if I want to get it clean, then I, I just roll the volume down, which these clean up beautifully. Yeah. Oh yeah. Is it treble bleed? Yes. Yeah. So you can roll off the, the volume without losing highs yeah. and getting sort of a dead thing. So, yeah, even... Because it is amazing to me how hot that amp is running and how clean that sounds. Yeah. Yeah, it's good for, for volume swells and shit. It's fun stuff. Yes. And then the lead. The crushing leads. Yep. So... <laughs> That's fun. Do you do a lot of uh, uh, of neck pickup stuff when you're playing lead? Do you go back and forth? Do you have a Do you have a particular place you like to go, or do you just fit that I into mean, like, every song? I like neck neck pickup shit if I'm using like my fingers. Yeah, of course. Um, I don't really use it too much in foo. Like I will occasionally throw it on for leads and stuff, but you know, I, I my brain, I'm just like, yeah, I just gotta get this right. 
<laughs> you know, but like recording and stuff, I'll totally use that. I'll totally use the bass contour, you know, and you could hear how that like colors the fuzz a little different if, like sure, from yeah, the bass yeah. contour. <laughs> That comes in super handy. So uh, let let's do the thing where uh, where we just sort of back to back do the clean sounds in all three pickup positions, and then your sort of lead tones in all three pickup positions. For those who are thinking, that's what I want to hear. So you are in the neck. Right, I'm in the neck. Most people probably run their amp cleaner than that. So you know, but this is like volumes halfway up. Pretty chimey. Oh yeah. And both. That's a good sound. Yeah. Back. Where most people are probably at, like that, yeah. that broken up. Super fun guitar, I think. I really don't need any other guitar, but yes. But more of these. More yes. And then a, a more traditional overdrive tone. You've got this dude dude pedal that you've been playing around with a yeah. lot here. Yeah, that's pretty fun. It's like a Dumble clone, kind of. Yeah. <laughs> And then let's hear the signature guitar through the signature fuzz through the signature head, Bob. That's right. Bob Balch, signature guitar from Reverend.